Welcome to module 57 of Point Set Topology Part 1 course. We will continue our study of topological groups today, which we have started uh, last time, right? So here are some notation which I am going to fix up at least for today, maybe tomorrow for next time also. So these notations will be pertinent for this section. Take any topological group or just a group to begin with. For any group, you can have this notation. A and B are subsets. Okay. A followed by B. A, B, you can write. A is equal to all little a, little b, where A is little a is in capital A and little b is in capital B. Okay. Similarly, A inverse will be all A inverse where little a is inside A. All right. I want to draw your attention. This is not a subgroup generated by something and so on. It is inside the group, but these are just sets and this is just A comma B. Okay, but you have to combine them with the group law. Here you have to take the inverse and take the correct one inside. So it follow the following easily proved fundamental results are at the heart of various special topological properties of topological groups that we are going to obtain. Okay. So I will not keep saying that G is a group, G mu E is a group, and so on. So this will be G will be always denote a now topological group for some time. The first thing is this lemma says for each G in G, look at the left multiplication map given by G, namely LG of H is GH. So this is a map from G to G. Similarly, I can take the right multiplication RG of H is equal to h times g okay so one is multiplying on the left multiplying on the right okay so both are maps from g to g they are self homeomorphisms of g okay it's very clear that they are invertible the inverse of lg being equal to l g inverse to multiply g inverse g inverse g is identity so it will be h so they are bijections, you know, LG and RG. Why they are homeomorphisms? Because they are also continuous. Okay, multiplication, you are just here, you are freezing the element G. Okay, only H is variable. So if it's like a two variable function, you are taking one variable, one the other one is fixed, so that's also continuous. Okay, since G, LG and LG inverse, both are continuous, both of them are homeomorphisms, similarly RG and RG inverse. So an easy consequence of this is that you take any open subset, okay, any open subset, okay, and X be any arbitrary subset of G, then UX, what is UX? U is consists of little u comma little x, okay, multiply multiplied together and collected together. So that will be an open set. Similarly, x q now multiplying on the other side, or you can take x u x inverse, or you can take many other com combinations. Go on multiplying, just like writing alphabets. Okay, one of them is open. That is necessary. Then all these all these subsets will be open. Can you see why this is true? Look at u, that's an open set. When you multiply on the right by x, what is that? It is just taking rg of u, rx of u. 
Rx is a homeomorphism. So Rx of u, one single x here, okay? Namely u little x. That is open. Because it's the image of u. Now ux is nothing but union of all these things where x varies over x. Therefore, this ux is open. Similarly, xu. So once this is open, you can apply it to you know xu times x number. X inverse is the mother side. Right? You can go on applying it to finite many things all the time. So they will be all open subsets. Okay, I am repeatedly used that Rg and Xg Lg are homeomorphisms. Okay. So this is the fantastic thing happening here inside a topological group. The second thing is the inversion Ig, which I have denoted by Ig, that Ig equal to G inverse. This is a self-homeomorphism of G. And if you take again I composite I, namely I square, that is identity. Because inverse of G, okay, inverse of inverse of G is G itself. Okay. So why this is again, this is continuous what we have seen already. This is a, because I square is identity, this is a homeomorphism. So I composite I is identity. So this is bijective. So both I and I, its inverse is I itself. So it's a homeomorphism. Okay, it's a very special homeomorphism. It's of order of two. Next, here is a easy thing which you will keep using without even mentioning it. So here I have mentioned it for the first time. Maybe, uh, you know, it will be used several times. Namely, take any three subsets. Okay. Suppose AB intersection C is empty. Then and then only A intersection CB inverse will be also empty. Okay. It is very easy to verify. If AB intersection C is non-empty, would imply it is also non-empty. That is the way you can prove it. Take a point here which, we, which will look like A into B, but it is an element of C. So C equal to AB, right? But then A will be equal to what? C, B inverse. So there is an element A here and the same element is here, C, B inverse. So it is this also non-empty and converse. Okay. A group homomorphism G, uh, G to G prime F. Okay. What is a group homomorphism? F of some X, Y is equal to F, X into F, Y for all X and Y inside G, right? A group homomorphism of a topological group is continuous if and only if it's continuous at a single point, namely E belongs to G. Any other point will also do, but let us prove for E belongs to G. Okay, so you must have learned it elsewhere, but let me sum it up here because of the importance of this uh, this. Uh, a little uh, result here. Okay, we need to prove only if part because only the if part, huh? only if not only if part. Because what you know is if it's continuous, it is continuous at G also. Just continuity at a single point makes it continuous everywhere. That is the part which you have to show. Okay, so let F be continuous at E and G be any other element, some other element. Let us look at the image of that, namely G prime equal to Fg. Since F is a homomorphism, for every H inside G, we have Fh, you multiply G inverse on this side, F of that, F of G inverse will come out, right? F of G inverse is again by the same multiplication, it is Fg. F, sorry, Fg inverse. So Fg, F. Fg inverse cancel out, so only Fh remains from here. So it is Fh is equal to this one. So what I have done is I multiplied G inverse on the left inside the bracket. So outside the bracket, if it will be Fg inverse because of the F is a homomorphism, so I have to compensate it. So I am multiplying again by Fg so that it cancels out. 
All right. But now what is this inside thing? It is the left multiplication by G inverse, right? And FG is a point of G prime. So it's a left, left, left multiplication by LG prime inside G prime. So this whole thing will look like LG prime composite F composite LG inverse operating upon H. Therefore, F itself is equal to LG composite, LG prime composite, F composite, LG prime, LG inverse. Okay. So I have written F itself like this complicated way. But this will help us now. Why? Because I know LG inverse is continuous. LG prime is continuous. To show that F is continuous at a point, I have to only show that F is continuous at some other point. What is that? That is precisely what is happening here. See, I want to show this map F is continuous at G. Okay, so I apply LG inverse to this. This G comes to E. Now I apply F. But F is continuous at E. So I can go all the way up till here. When I come to F of that is its E prime and LG prime will, will take it to G prime. So that is nothing but F of G. Okay. So the middle thing is continuous at E. These two are continuous functions. The composite is continuous and the starting point here is G. So the composite is continuous at G. Okay. There are many different ways of writing it down. So I find it uh, the elegant way of writing it. So, so if you learn this kind of writing down, it will make other concepts very clear. It's elsewhere also. Now I introduce uh, uh, terminology here because this inversion keeps coming again and again, right? You take a subset A contained inside G and call it symmetric if A equal to A inverse. That is, if you take the iota, which is uh, which is the inversion, under inversion, it is invariant. I of A is A. Okay. So such a thing is called symmetric. Now, okay, this is a temporary notation. This has been used by others. So I am also using this uh, word, terminology. Now, here is a lemma for symmetric things. Let O be a neighborhood of the identity element in G. Okay. Then the following is true. There exist symmetric open subsets U of G such that they contain the point E and such that they are inside O. So starting with any neighborhood, you can improve it to become a symmetric neighborhood. Okay. There are many ways of doing it. So there are many of them. In fact, if this happens to everything, you can go on taking for every, you know, it's, there's a symmetric neighborhood systems. So this means just that instead of all neighborhoods, you can just take symmetric neighborhoods to form a fundamental system at the origin. So that is the profoundest thing here. Okay. Similarly, even more profound is there exists symmetric open sets V of G containing the point E and such that V is a subset of VV that is obvious anyway. Okay. But VV itself is contained inside. Now, see V is symmetric. I can replace V by V inverse at my will. So this will imply a lot many things. That's what I told you. So these are elementary observations to build up the topological theory. So you have to come back here. If you have made mistakes or you haven't understood these things correctly, then you will have problems. You will see that. Okay. So starting with any neighborhood of identity, I can get such a, you know beautiful neighborhoods. Neighborhood symmetry, neighborhoods which are contained inside their own product and the product is contained inside over and so on. Okay. So how to prove that? Proof is also very elegant in the sense that. Okay, here I am actually proving even stronger thing here. 
namely instead of single point you can do it for any neighborhood let a contain inside o be an open subset of e okay see oh, yeah, I, i started with oh, arbitrary neighborhood only now i am taking a to be open subset a neighborhood means after all there is an open subset right so e belongs to a a is open a contain inside o let us start that way since the inversion e is a homeomorphism it follows that a inverse is also open okay because it is eta of a take u equal to a intersection a inverse a is open a inverse is open intersection is open inverse image of e is e itself the inverse of image e is e itself sorry so e is in both of them so that was u is a neighborhood of e open neighborhood of e okay what is u inverse it will be a inverse intersection with a which is same thing as u so u is symmetric open set containing a and u is contained inside o okay because u is a intersection a inverse and a is also contained inside o. okay so this is one way of obtaining a symmetric neighborhood use continuity of the function for the next one namely x y going to x y inverse so at the point e comma e belong to g cross g where does e comma e go to it will go to e so take a neighborhood o o i have taken by continuity there will be open subset here and open subset here that the product is going inside this open set so that is what i am writing here namely e comma e belong to b1 cross b2 b1 and b2 are open subsets okay this nu of b1 b2 will be equal to b1 b2 inverse that will be contained inside o so this is my continuity of this map which uh, which i had denoted by nu earlier apply a this part to get a symmetric neighborhood v of e such that this v is contained inside the intersection of b1 and b2 b1 and b2 are neighborhoods of e so intersection is also neighborhood of e so now i can improve it to become become uh, symmetric also so v could be inverse is the extra hypothesis i can put okay so once you have that v is always contained as a v into v because identity is there right so v equal to ev let's contain v v so but i can replace this v by v inverse so this will be v into v inverse also because v equal to v inverse but now this v is contained as a b1 and it's also contained as a b2 so the first one is b1 second one is b2 inverse i have written that's all and that is contained inside o okay so proof is over so we will have opportunity to use this one no problem let us see now a little about closures and so on let a and b be any subsets of g again okay let this curly nu be the set of all neighborhoods of a in g let curly s be the set of all symmetric neighborhoods of e so this is a smaller this is smaller uh, family okay this is all neighborhoods this is only symmetric neighborhoods then the claim is a bar a is an arbitrary subset i am making as a statement about a bar a bar is intersection of all a v where v range is over symmetric neighborhoods it is also equal to intersection of all av where v range is over all the neighborhoods then the other way around instead of av i have v a here and v a here the other two things are similar here so either i can write it on the left side or right on the right side if i take intersection of all of them i what i get is a bar 
okay the second thing is much easier a bar b bar is contained inside a b bar it's a neat statement okay let us see how these proofs work let us first prove the the equality the first one what is the first one a bar equal to intersection of v belonging to s a b so where s is only symmetric okay what is the meaning of a bar take a point in a bar its closure means every neighborhood of that point intersects a that is the definition of closure right we shall use that directly the definition of closure no other properties no, directly use the definition okay suppose x is not in a bar then i want to show that it is not in one of the sets here therefore it is cannot be an intersection so not in a bar means not on the right hand side and again not here means not here that is what i want to show okay so suppose x is not in a bar then there is a u inside v what is v neighborhoods neighborhoods of identity element okay such that x times u intersection a is empty so what is x times u x times u will be neighborhood of this is neighborhood of x x is not here every neighborhood of x will look like x times u where u is a neighborhood of identity this is what i am using here you see neighborhoods of any other point you don't have to look anywhere you have just translate them left translation or right translation it doesn't matter starting with identity element and a neighborhood multiply by x on the right or x on the right that will contain x and it will be neighborhood because these are homeomorphisms multiplication on the right or left right that is what i am using here x u in this is any neighborhood of x will look like this okay it's most general one so there is no speciality here and one of them intersection a is empty because x is not in a bar that's all i have now by part a of the previous lemma we can assume that u is symmetric we can go back to a symmetric neighborhood it will be smaller thing contained inside you so that that will be still empty so i can assume u itself is symmetric okay now it follows that x is not in a u see i have a b intersection c is empty implies a intersection b c inverse empty that is what i am using here <laughs> okay so if this is empty x cannot be in a u now this is symmetric therefore it is one of the elements here one of the members here so that means that x cannot be in the intersection okay so one part we have done now start with the point which is not here then you can show that it is not in the closure this is what i have right conversely suppose x does not belong to rhs that means there is a symmetric neighborhood now directly because i have put s here Say let us call it as V, okay, such that X is not in A B. See V is a symmetric neighborhood. I have A times that I am taking right, so X is not in A B. So that is the meaning of this. It's not in the intersection. That just means that again going back here, X V intersection A is empty. If X V is a neighborhood of X, this means X is not in the closure. so part a is done the next one what we have to do a b a bar b bar contained inside a b bar okay so let us see why so first thing is we know in a product topology if you have a subset a and a subset b of the two x and y then a cross b closure is the same thing as a closure cross b closure right that's what i am using here a cross b bar is equal to a bar plus b bar okay now all that i have to use is 
the continuity of the multiplication that's all the mu from g cross g to g x y going to x into y so how let us see a cross b is obviously contained inside mu inverse of a b because mu of a cross b is nothing but a b okay if you take inverse a cross b will be contained in mu inverse of a b all right but a b is a smaller subset than a b bar so this is contained in the mu inverse of a b okay no, sorry mu inverse a b bar but that will imply if you take the closure this is a closed subset why is it a closed subset it's a bar of something and then you mu inverse mu is continuous so mu inverse of this one is a closed subset containing a set so its closure will be contained inside that closure being the smallest closed set containing the set right so i am using something which we have done in a long long back perhaps but a, a cross b bar is a bar cross b bar so a bar cross b bar is a cross b bar that is contained inside mu inverse of a b bar because this is a closed subset containing a cross b okay so mu of this will be contained is a b bar now we apply mu on both side this will be a bar b bar and that is contained is a b bar so don't make the mistake of you know that a b bar is contained is a a bar b bar okay first thing you should observe is that a bar is closed b bar is closed but a bar b bar may not be closed okay so these are the cautions now we are going to do something quite deep suddenly okay we have everything every machinery ready for it so start with a compact subset and c be a closed subset of a topological group j okay no other assumptions k is compact and c is closed okay suppose they are disjoint then they can be separated by open sets that is just but we can do better namely there exist one single open subset v of v of open neighborhood of a such that kv that would be neighborhood of k that we know right kv intersection cv is empty kv is a neighborhood of k cv will be a neighborhood of c because v is a neighborhood of identity but these are quite large open subsets for that matter but they contain k and c the intersection is empty so such a neighborhood of identity i can find so this is the claim in particular it will follow that k and c can be separated by open sets it is similar to normality but far away from normality because i have assumed k is compact not a closed set okay not just a closed set if it is a closed set then this would have given you normality so quite near normality it comes okay so that is why i am doing it we are suddenly proving this uh, such uh, strong results so now do you understand that topological groups the topology and a topological group has to be special all right though it ranges from discrete to indiscrete okay anything in between but it has to be special okay let us prove this one if k is empty there is nothing to prove because i can always take you know k times v when k is empty is just empty set empty set intersection anything is empty that's no problem so let us assume that k is non empty similarly we can assume that c is non empty all right so i start with x belonging to k that is why i am justifying that let k be non empty that's all take a point x inside k 
put O equal to X inverse of G minus C. So C is closed, so G minus C is open, translated by X inverse. That is also open. See, look at this one. X is a point of point of K. Okay. So I'm I taking K X inverse of this one. So that is an open subset is all that I have, I know. Okay. Now from lemma 5.13, whatever, we get a symmetric neighborhood Vx of E such that Vx x, Vx Vx is contained inside O. See why this is true? Because O is a neighborhood of identity. Why? Because x is inside K, therefore x is inside G minus C. Because x is not in C. K and C are disjoint. That's all. Okay. If x is here, x inverse of that will contain identity element. So this O is open and it is an, a neighborhood of identity. You can improve it to get a symmetric neighborhood Vx such that Vx Vx is inside of. So this was part A and B both combined here of this lemma, which we have proved just now. This implies that x times vx vx intersection c is empty. This contains a O in x inverse of g, right? So this x I bring it on the left here. So what I have what is g minus c on that side? Okay, so it's contained inside g minus c, but intersection with c is empty there. Okay, so for each x we have found out x, vx, vx, intersection c is empty. So this already tells you that x is, uh, g is regular, the topology is regular. What? Why? Because suppose you instead of k compact and so on, k, this singleton x was, this k was singleton x. Okay. Then if I prove whatever the statement, that would be regular and that's all, that's all I have proved x vx vx is a neighborhood okay contained inside the complement of c so here itself the proof is over of regularity okay so we have already proved that every topological group is regular on the way to proving this lemma okay let us continue now applying the lemma 5.13 again we get another symmetric neighborhood which I have denoted by ux of e such that this ux vx is contained inside vx. Okay, because vx is a neighborhood of identity. All right. So if you combine this one, x vx vx intersection c is empty. Now I can replace vx by ux vx, which is a smaller neighborhood of uh, the, and then Vx. So Ux, Ux, and Ux, Ux, intersection C is empty. Okay. So don't go on doing it. Now we have already arrived this one. Now Ux is a neighborhood of E, right? So Ux is contained inside Ux, Ux. And since Ux is symmetric, okay, this immediately implies that X, Ux, Ux, is contained is x u x u x u x intersection c x u c of u x is empty now one u x on this side i am translating it to the other side okay when you translate you have to write u x inverse but you don't have to write u x inverse because u x is symmetric out of the three you can translate to the one other side and out of three, you can combine two of them and that just take one of them. Ux is contained Ux. So x, Ux, Ux is intersection with C of Ux is empty. Okay. We have not yet completed. So one single thing we have done this much. From regularity, we have improved it to this much. Okay, the same neighborhood here repeated twice comes on the C part also. Okay, to prove regularity as I had just the X, V, X intersection C is empty. That was enough. 
okay now we go now we use the fact that k is compact so if k is compact there will be finitely many x1 x2 k belong to k such that k is contained inside xi u xi i range to 1 to x okay why because these xi u xi x u x or x varies over k that will cover k and that's an open cover so out of that you extract a finite cover now we put v equal to intersection of u xi because this finite intersection it is open because each u xi is symmetric symmetric means what eta of u xi is eta okay so intersection will also have that property it follows that v is symmetric neighborhood of e open neighborhood of e. moreover we have k times v is contained inside union of xi u xi i am replacing k by this union times v then i push this v inside the bracket so it is a union of xi times u xi v okay but then each u xi v v is what v is intersection of all these right so it is contained inside each u xi i can replace v by u xi depending upon what this xi is so i range one to a xi u xi u xi i can write okay so kv is contained inside this one finite union therefore if i take the intersection now kv intersection cv i want to show that this is empty right that was my final thing look at kv intersection cv this kv is contained inside this one large thing okay so you take this thing intersect with cv push it inside the bracket that's all okay so it is union of all these intersections finitely many of them but that is contained in that union of xi u xi u xi as it is but c of v what is v v is intersection of these things which contains the c of u xi this is these are larger open sets okay but now what are these things each of them is empty by the choice remember that each of them is empty i have taken only finite many, many connection xi are coming from capital k okay so each of them is there are finite many of the many anyway. each of them is empty so union is empty so we have proved that a topological group is strongly regular in the sense compact and disjoint closed sets contract set and a closed set can be separated by open sets in a neat way one single neighborhood of v then its transit kv intersection cv is empty okay so i am just uh, summing it up for posterity every topological group is regular that much is fine all right so here are some uh, elementary exercises again you can work out them but these are serious examples serious exercises if you if you work them in that order you will be able to do all of them so they are built up in that fashion okay and then there are some other very nice things happening i have no time to discuss them fully but we will discuss them provided you show equal interest and come up with some solution maybe wrong maybe right whatever it is so these are left to use exercises and maybe specifically mentioned assignments okay so let us stop here next time we will continue the study of topological groups thank you